Welcome to Applied Sciences, Episode 4. Uh, this week we're going to go into the development stages of a current project I'm working on. It's another suit design, as you see I have a few suits here that have been used in projects. Um, this week's is a bit more complicated, it's going to be a replica of this style armor. Uh, this is based on the Batman Arkham Knight video game. Uh, it's just mainly the torso piece right now. It's made. What I'm doing is creating. I've 3D printed a model here, and put it together. But it's got seam lines currently to it, and I from the glue and where it was pieced together. What I need to do is prep it with auto body filler uh, called Bondo. Uh, fill that, sand it, fill it, sand it, fill it, sand it. Um, check for every little inconsistency that I can before I silicone mold it because silicone will take every single detail and show it honestly so um, before I want to do that because that's very expensive um, silicone and molding and casting in general is, can be quite expensive so I don't want to waste any of it so, so this is a very detail oriented phase of it um, next week we'll cover doing the mold itself and the steps involved in that and a little bit of me doing it alright so first off we've got some auto body filler I'm using Bondo uh, it's just your typical body filler I believe it's at a level 3 is what it said on the can. This isn't really a how-to, but this is what I'm using. Um, vinyl gloves because they're powder-free. Latex gloves often have a powder and some people are allergic to latex. I'm not one of those people. I just, I just prefer vinyl when I'm using this sort of stuff. So the idea behind the original armor is that this is armor that's over a cloth or some sort of a Kevlar weave undersuit or an, uh, an undergarment of some kind. So these plates are actually supposed to be over fabric. So the gaps that I've printed here and that were part of the original model are supposed to be fabric but because I also printed this in several different pieces to make it easier for the printer I need to fill in those gaps but still make them look wrinkly enough that they look like fabric but considering this is going to be cast out of rubber anyway so it's going to be flexible um, the idea is to get it as smooth as possible but still give it enough texture that it looks like it's got something underneath. This will be bolted onto a fabric undersuit for the actor to wear, but I can't generate the natural gaps in between the plates without ruining the entire piece. So after the first coat of applying the Bondo, it takes, let it sit for about a couple hours. I sand it down here with a rotary sander. Um, this is at a coarser grit. I believe I used around 100 grit sandpaper just to knock out all the extra clumps from not smoothing it properly when I laid it down and just getting out all the big chunks of it before I go, go in with the, with the uh, 400 grit sandpaper to really smooth it and blend it on the second coat of Bondo with to blend it in with the original pieces of the model. Now you'll see how there's black, almost paint-like substance on some parts of the of the edges here on the model. That's because uh, I smoothed it all out and sanded it down. I wanted to see what it looked like with a little bit of paint on it so I could see what it looked like all uniform to see how noticeable the creases are in between because when you cast it out of silicone, which will be in the next episode, it will show every detail. So anything that I leave here will be picked up by the silicone in the mold and then we'll be casting the final piece when I cast it out of your thing. So to be very careful, this is the most time consuming step of this. The silicone part only takes a few hours and the urethane takes even less that, uh, amount of time to get my final piece. So this is where the details are very very important in this process. So we do several coats of this, paint it just a little bit, not a whole lot because that again will ruin the mold if I use too much. I'll probably strip off most of this paint before I go to silicone mold this. But I have to do all these different le levels of sanding and applying more to see what exactly I'm getting in between all these seam lines to go over every little detail. Now one of the last steps I like to do on some prints is because I chose a particular sandpaper made by 3M that can also be used as a wet sand or a dry sand, I do do a little bit of a wet sand on the chest plates because they're curved. So to get them, when it, when it was originally printed, I'll show a picture here. Uh, you can see a little bit of, uh, from the infill design was a triangle infill, and because the top layer isn't as thick, um, you can see through some of the some of the infill support there, of the little triangles. So what I wanted to do was give it like a smooth wet sand 
to really get the arc of the chest plate pieces of the pectoral muscle plates to get those really rounded off there so that uh, it doesn't look as rigid as the as the base print did or natural as the source material does after that it's just a little bit of detail sanding in between the creases and let it sit again to let the bondo fully cure and we move on to silicone molding for next week